Welcome to the SMB Community Podcast with your hosts, Amy Babinchak, James Kernan, and Carl Polichuk. Produced by and for the Small Biz Thoughts community. We're dedicated to making every IT professional a successful IT professional. PC Medic, endpoint security built on a zero trust default deny foundation. Finally, a lightweight, simple to deploy and easy to manage approach to application allow listing, the perfect complement to your current security stack. No minimums and no annual contracts. Find out more about PCMatic by visiting pcmatic.com slash MSP today. Welcome to another SMB Community Podcast. This is Carl Polichuk, and I'm joined today by Michael Callahan, who is the Chief Marketing Officer for Acronis. Welcome, yeah. sir. Thank you, Carl. So tell me a little bit about your background. Like, how did you get here? Yeah, uh... So it started in, uh, I was born in Michigan. I was born in Detroit. Uh, my uh, family was a first generation from um, Poland, actually. My parent, my grandparents, both from Poland. Callahan, obviously. Uh, yeah, and then, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, and then there's also Irish in my family, which, um, anyway. Uh, we. Um, so I was born in Detroit, uh, grew up in Ohio, and um, always really, um, really enjoyed technology, really enjoyed building things, really enjoyed products and just seeing how things worked and uh that led me through you know a series of of, of roles um in particular uh in sales that was probably the most influential one um it's something that i have i have two daughters now and it's something that i tell them that when they graduate from college they will take a sales job um that it will <laughs> it will benefit them for their entire life understanding um understanding how that works you I will do it yeah, there's no discussion. There was some earlier, like when they were in high school and middle school, there were some discussions my wife and I had where I said, I think they really should do this. And, but it ended up becoming negotiated out. But what happens <laughs> if they say, no, daddy, I want to be a nuclear physicist. If that was the actual trade-off, then that would be different. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> if they want to go that way. Uh, right. But anyway, I wanted them to be, so I did sales and then I was an SE and then a product manager. And um, eventually the last couple of roles I've had have been as a chief marketing officer. Very good. Yeah. Well, just so you know, uh, I graduated. My graduate school was uh, University of Michigan, so go, uh, go blue. <laughs> and that concludes our discussion today. Oh, no, it's a Michigan State boy. <laughs> I went to Ohio State, even worse. Oh, okay. oh my God. Okay, we are definitely done. So. Sorry that you're ranked oh. so low this year so and got always a behind us. But. super good friend back in Sacramento who always gives me a bad time because he's an Ohio State fan and we haven't won a game in forever. So until recently... So, and it, that'll be broken this year. So in, <laughs> in three weeks, I'm sorry that you're going to lose again. There but. you go. <laughs> All righty. So uh, we are broadcasting live from the Acronis CyberFit Summit. Thank right. you for making this all happen. A yeah. uh, lot of podcasters here, uh, but I want to talk about the not just the marketing side, but the big picture. So when Acronis goes to market with MSPs, uh, one of the big things that you push is simplicity and sort of, I guess, making the stack a little smaller. We love to buy toys, right? And yeah. cybersecurity has been like the toy market gone insane for the last 10 years. That's so right, yeah. why should I simplify? Why should I? It feels like downsizing. Yeah. It's, well, it, um, I think the reason behind that is, so we all do like in this, in this space, we all like these toys. We want the latest, greatest. Someone comes out with some new thing that may not even be a new thing. It just happens to be rebranded new, but someone wants, everyone wants to look at this, um, the newest thing. What we're finding is that, uh, there's a trade off there. So the, the, the trade off is, do you want a bunch of siloed, cool, new technology, something that may have a lot of buzz or maybe solves a really small problem? Or as an MSP, are you thinking about your business? and the, the, um, the value that you can deliver to your end customers. And what we're finding is that the MSP say, I would much rather deliver a good experience, have a consolidated set of tools that I can then turn on or turn off as needed, as simple as possible, but give me something that I can manage. I mean, it's, you've heard the, the terms before, like swivel chair management, where you're swiveling, and you're looking at one console, you turn a little bit, you look at another console, and you turn, nobody wants that. Even though you have that, there's that allure and that, that, sometimes that desire to say, oh, I'd like this latest, coolest thing. But then you look back and you're like, as a business owner, you say, really, I need to be delivering value to my customers. And the best way to do that is if I can give them a good experience. Right. Well, the other thing is there's a lot of overlap when you own 
whatever, seven <laughs> tools, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. They all do one thing in common, and then they all do some unique yeah. thing, and uh, so it, it becomes hard to manage. Is there a, a weakness in having a sole source for your cybersecurity? Well, um, there could be, right? And it depends. It, de- it, it kind of, that's all many things. It kind of depends. What, what we have architected, which I think is pretty, um, it's pretty brilliant, right? And, and what, of our, what our engineers have done is we have this platform uh, that has a single agent and it has multiple applications in it. And, and then within those applications, uh, different features or functions. So you've got the five applications. It's security, backup, disaster recovery, automation, and management. And how we built it is pick and choose. They're, none of them are dependent on any of the other ones. So if you really, really like the security solution you're using, but you don't have a good way to do ticketing or, or send invoices, use our automation. And what we find happens is as people do that, they see how simple we've made it and they say, I want to try something else too. I'm going to add this other piece, this other piece. And some people go all in on every piece of it. And some say, I want to use these three apps or I want to use this, this combination or that combination. But the, 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 the word in there or the concept in there that we focus on is choice. You can choose. If you want to use one of our partner or integration partners to do RMM or PSA, absolutely. If you want to use one, if you want to use a different company to do some other part of the, you know, de- de- delivery service, that's fine. We'll give you that choice. So, Acronis is actually a pretty old company. You know, <laughs> when, when I <laughs> when I think about companies, there's like the new startups that have got a whole bunch of new money and they got to get their twenty percent to their investors <laughs> every year. They have one yeah. set of motivations, and then there's the the antique companies like Intel that uh, literally they're on their fourth generation of like right. running themselves. Acronis is is old enough that you actually have got a regular budget for uh, development and and going forward. Yeah. And so you don't put that on hold because you're about to do an IPO or put that on hold because the all. investors need something else. So how old are the products that you're selling now? Are mm. they is the code uh, ten years old, five years old? Fresh. Yeah, so I, I think you may be alluding to something that we mentioned here. That so we're, we're going to have our twentieth anniversary next year. Uh, so we're proud of that. We're proud that we've been around that long. That we've been serving customers. We have, you know, um, fifty thousand partners across the different from our, our SP cloud partners to our traditional partners, um, and we're proud of being in business for twenty years. What we saw about five years ago, plus or minus, uh, was this consolidation happening, and and. Not, well, the consolidation wasn't happening. We saw service providers saying, I can't manage all these tools, and it's only getting worse. I keep having to add another thing and another thing. So we took uh, a big investment over the last four or five years, put it into developing this agent that not only delivers all of these services that uh, MSPs need, but that also doesn't slow machines down, right? Because it's, it's I mean, anybody could build an enormous agent, you know, you take a, here's a 50 gig agent, you push down to a machine <laughs> and it does everything, but the machine doesn't work <laughs> because right, it's exactly. taking all the processes. <laughs> um, and that's what we've been invested a lot of time in that developing that technology that's simple to use. Uh, it delivers a good experience uh, and it's, um, it's optimized for performance. And so your question was how, how old is it? Well, I mean, we develop code every week, right? So it's, it could be as old, you know, as new as right. a day. Well, and, um, and the, the question really gets to, there's a lot of weaknesses that show up in old code, right? Oh, that yeah. has been marked as good or clean or, you know, safe yeah. for 10 years. And yet somebody finds a new way to take advantage of old code and something yeah. marked safe in everybody's system is suddenly not safe anymore. Right. Yeah. Well, and that, so that's something that we look at with our own. I mean, as we're adding new functionality, you also have a team that's looking at how do you, how do you kind of clean up what's there, right? Like some, you know, and if you, if, you know, you ship a product um, and you may have, you may have uh, uh, know, different severity issues in it, right? From, from a showstopper, which you can't ship, of course, to something that's, is it a, is it a bug or is it a feature? We're not really, it kind of walks the line between those. But you have a team that's always going back and looking at that existing code and making sure that not only are you cleaning it up so it's optimized and working faster, uh, but that maybe it doesn't have vulnerabilities, right, that someone could take advantage of. Like right. You, pointed out. you know, it used to be 10, 15 years ago that backup was backup. You know, it's like if something horrible happens, I push a button, I get my system back, <laughs> life is good. Yeah. Now it's a huge piece of cybersecurity, which means – it's like this massive yeah. liability. I'm managing backup. I like when I get an insurance policy, if I check the box, I manage backups. There are companies that won't cover me anymore. 
you know? So how do you, I don't know, live in an environment where your, your product is like almost at war with the people who should be helping us fix the liability issue? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's complicated for, for sure. And I think one of the things that we've done is we've built this, this global infrastructure or this network where we have um, uh, 52 uh, data centers around the world so that anytime someone does need quick backup, fast backup, um, disaster recovery, whatever, whatever it might be, um, it's relatively local. So you're going to have some performance there. Um, you build high-speed connections anyway, but you're going to have performance. But you also are, are staying on the right side of the compliance laws. So if you happen to be in Germany and there's certain laws and the data can't leave, You've got a data center there that's accessible, so you get quick backup, quick disaster recovery. But that those laws may be different than Australia or the U.S. or whatever. And so you want to build, you want to have these these local data centers that allow for that um, that backup and that restore. And how many countries do you guys operate in? Forty. We have forty offices. Well, yes, forty offices. Forty, <laughs> 40, offices. 40 different countries that we have an office in. Um, we have, uh, I think, we speak twenty five different languages in the in the company. Um, a little over 2,200 employees. Um, well, I've yeah. been amazed at the CyberFit Summit. Probably half the people I talk to are not from the United States. That's, That's right. highly yeah. unusual yeah. in any conference I've ever been to. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, usually there's some people, but not half the population. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that's about right. So the, um, you're almost you're almost exactly right on. I think it was 56 or 60 percent, maybe in the low, in the, in the low 50s. Um, were from the U.S. and then the, or from the Americas, and then the rest were from well, North America, either from Latin America, uh, Europe, or, or uh, Asia Pacific. Um, but it's Very a cool. great mix, especially with um, now with people. I mean, people want to travel, but there's still a little bit of concern with what's going on with <clears throat> with COVID, or and, you know. Um, but the fact that so many people decided that this, this was worth them traveling here, it's great to see. Well, it doesn't hurt that it's Miami, you know. That's it's true. My last opportunity for 80-degree weather before winter settles in. That's very true. <laughs> and, so, and that's true for much of, uh, of Europe as well. So um, what's next? So in terms of going to market, how do folks engage with Acronis? What, where, what, where should they get started? So the, the first place to always start is to go to the website. Right? So acronis.com is going to get you, if you are a service provider, there's an easy link there to figure out or to find information that's good for you. Uh, if you're an, Maybe you're just in an IT department and you want you want the technology, but you don't want to go, you, you'd rather have it more, you buy it through a reseller than having it delivered through as a service. That's fine too. There's another link there. And then if you're a home user uh, or maybe a very small business and you want some, just some of our basic backup and security tools, you, you can go there too. So everyone... Start with the start with the website, um, and then um, there's places for more information. Click here, give us your name, and then we'll always uh, reach out to you. And, and who's you. your ideal partner? Like, what size of MSP would you, if if you could have everybody be that size, what size would they be? Yeah. So the it's one of the questions I ask as a chief marketing officer is like, well, who? Let's let's identify our the profile of our of our ideal customer. And what I found was a little bit surprising, and that. Because we built the technology to be so simple, you didn't have to have um, these advanced security skills or technology skills, and so that really widens your market. And so your ideal customer could be someone. It could be someone that just said, "I want to start my own shop, right?" And so I've got me and my my you know grown child, or me and my wife, or me and my spouse, or whatever. It's two people. Um, we built it so that they could start their own business. At the same time, you have MSPs that are serving some of the the large, like the, the large enterprises, outsourcing all of their all of their um, technology needs. They can deliver it as well. So there, it, it's because of the way we built the technology to make it simple. Um, the ideal customer is almost the entire market, right? From from very small people to very large people. See, that's a that that's a good PR answer. <laughs> but it's also true. <laughs> So the follow-up is, what's the real answer? So, so because like in the United States, we have a massive number of super small shops, like one to five mm-hmm. person shops. But even in Canada, the average MSP is a little larger than that. And in Australia, the average MSP is a little larger than that. Mm-hmm. It's just the nature of the beast. So even though most businesses are small, most MSPs are slightly larger mm-hmm. in other countries. Sure. Uh, I don't I don't know what it is in Europe off the top of my head, but... Um, so you're saying you're a good fit for all of them. Well, so let me say two different ways. So so in terms of the MSP, we built the technology. So if you're a small MSP, 
it's easy for you to use and you've got um, you know, pricing plans that make sure that you're able to make money. If you're a large MSP, we have all of this advanced technology that you can use as well. If I, if I think about it a different way of like, who's the ideal end user for those MSPs, that's a little bit different. In that case, it's really the SMB market. Um, th that is the, that's the place where we uh, find the most success because they typically don't have the skills, they don't have the tools, the technology, and really what they want is just give me a bill at the end of the month. Just, just make this like a utility just like right. in, to the MSP. And so um, in that sense, it's really that SMB market. Although what I see happening, and, and it's it's a gradual change, but I think it's it will continue, is some of the larger, like once you get out of the SMB and you get into the M&L part of it before you get to like the super large enterprise, they're also starting to have the discussion of, do I really want to do this myself? Do I want to do this all internally? Or, or is it better that I can go external where they have access to maybe more or different tools than I might internally? It's more cost effective. I can treat it as you know whatever type of expense. Um, and so yeah. we see that trend. Well, there's always some bar that even the people who want to do it themselves, you say, when, when you introduce certain technology, they say, oh, no, I'm out. I have to hire somebody who knows what they're doing. Right, <laughs> right? right, exactly. So, and uh, it, you would think by now that everybody would be so scared of cybersecurity that they would just want to hand it off to somebody else. Yeah. Um, so, I, I don't know how we get into that last little bit of the market. But. I don't know, I, but I, I think that's, I, so ultimately, I think it will become a utility. I, I, I think if I look out like, I don't know what the time frame or the horizon on this is, but let's just say it's it's five to ten years. That that's a pretty good pretty good number. I think at some point, for the end user, there won't be a such thing as a really as a security brand. So they won't look at it and say like, and I'll, I'll use like, from, I'll use an old reference because I don't know that these they're really around in the form they were, but McAfee and Symantec, right? You had like that was the that was the Coke Pepsi of the right. you know, the last twenty years. Um, and that meant something. And people were like, oh, yeah, I've got, you know, I see the little icon on my machine. It says McAfee or it's, you know, it's semantic. I think for a lot of people in five or 10 years, it will just be security. And they just want something delivered. They just want to be able to say, um, I want this type of protection or this this functionality. And it's just delivered. It's delivered as a service. And, and the technology behind it doesn't mean anything to them. It does mean something to the MSP, which is where we're focused. Because if, if right. you take that to the conclusion... Well, that's going to be delivered by MSPs. It's it's not going to be the vendors that deliver that that service. Really, I think the MSPs already have a, enough of a foothold there that they're the ones that will likely do it. Um, and so then your brand is important to the MSP, but to the end user, I think they'll just say, "I just want a bill. I just give me a bill at the end of the month that I understand and right. keep me protected." But here's the question for the MSP. I'm almost afraid to be in the business today, right? Okay. <laughs> because there's just so much liability and there's so many attacks. It used to be an attack consisted of somebody found your machine. Now the the, the bad side of the internet is like a cloud that just touches everything <laughs> sure. and you are immediately exposed no matter what if you touch the internet. And so – I could see somebody saying, "I just I want to get in the business because I like technology, but I don't want to do security." Is that an option? Yeah, I, um, I, I guess it depends how you would define security. So possibly. So if you said, and you know, we tend to break these. We, we tend we say the combination of data uh, protection and cybersecurity is cyber protection, right? So there's four words. Take out the two middle ones, put it together, you get cyber <laughs> protection. Uh, because we believe that cyber protection is broader than just backup or, or security. However, there could be MSPs that say, I don't really want um, some, potentially some, I haven't heard this yet, but some, like as you explained, some of the liability that goes along with being a security provider, I, I just want to make sure that I give them backup. So I, I want to go to Acronis because Acronis I know has fast, local, regional backup that I can make sure that it's, it doesn't take very long to do it. And if I need to restore, it comes back quickly. Maybe there's less liability than that in that than saying, well, I'm going to um, get deliver email security or whatever some of the other more in-depth um, security solutions are. You know, just side note, but I was just talking to somebody who was saying that Acronis is the ba only backup they've ever used and that they put it on all their clients and they've never looked for anything else because it just plain works. That's so awesome. Just <clears throat> side note. So I would, here's a similar side note is I'm, um, I, I had to fly through Dubai back to Dallas um, like two, two or three weeks ago, it's three o'clock in the morning, I'm, which that's like the time the planes there where I take right. off to get back at a re reasonable time. I'm in an elevator going from like the fourth floor to the, the second floor. Um, and I'm completely tired. I'm, my eyes are barely open. I'm standing in the elevator and I, I happen to have an Acronis t-shirt on and someone gets in and says, 
oh, that reminds me. I need to renew my subscription. <laughs> like, I'm in yes, like, you do. I go, well, thank you for being a customer. And <laughs> absolutely. And if I can help with that, just let me know. <laughs> so I, I think it would be great to think about like who's coming into this industry, coming out of high school, you know, 18 or college, 22 and saying, hey, I think I should be an IT consultant. Mm. Um, can you give them a business in a box more or less? I think you can. Yeah. I mean, that's what we, so what we built with this platform is uh, someone that, so over time they will obviously develop some of the more detailed and more specific security skills or, or, or IT skills, but we built what we built so that really anyone can go in and understand that. I mean, we've, we've just had these two cases, I think are probably two of the best examples, but it applies across the product. Um, we, we announced uh, advanced DLP about a month and a half or two months ago uh, at the show today. Or this week, we're announcing advanced DDR. Those are two of the areas that I've seen fail left and right in my career. And um, I remember being, at least in two or three companies with DLP, there's this promise of, absolutely, we, you know, we can make sure that um, none, of your, none of your sensitive data gets out the, outside the company. And everyone goes, I love that. That's something. That I and then they think, well, how do you make that happen? And it just fails because it's way too complicated, right. right? It's like, do you tag every piece of information as you're creating it? or like, And no one was able to solve it. We did some great work on that where we, we made it simple for someone to use. So someone just coming out of school could actually deliver DLP um, as one of the services that they offer to their, their customers and understand how to set it up, how to configure it. Same thing on the EDR side. Um, that's a, It's very complicated when you think of when an attack comes in, what happens, right? It, it's not as simple as, you know, before... You would, get, you would be sent an email with an executable, and that executable would just started sending a bunch of mail, right? That was right. pretty simple, and there was not a lot of complexity to that. Now it has, you know, five, six, seven, eight, it could be a dozen different, like, fingers or tentacles that come out of that initial attack. What do you do? Well, EDR is, is great for understanding what is it and how do you respond to it, but it's super complicated. And we made that really simple where we put it in words that say, here's what happened. This, you know, this... Um, the user, you know, X, Y, Z, um, uh, was sent an email and it had this, this, um, this thread embedded in it and they clicked on it and that then went and started a process over here or attacked a process or shut down some sort of right or gained access to some, but it's done in like, like normal people words. And then the solution or the response piece, you say, what do you do? Well, it's like, well, back up to where I was before, shut down all the processes that are, that are being affected, but it's done in just this this normal sort of like how we all speak instead of like IT speak. So right. anyone could do it. So to your question about someone coming out of school, it almost is like a, like a business in a box. And then over time they'll get even better and better, but right out, right out of the gate. It's very simple. Well, I'm going to do a separate interview uh, about education, but you guys have some amazing educational programs to help people yeah. understand not just what a Cronus does, but what this industry is about and needs to be about in the 21st century. We do. Our, our, um, uh, a Cronus, the, our academy uh, is, is wonderful and people love what we do in it. Um, it's not only um, here's how the product works, but it is more broadly about, well, here's, here's things that you need to understand for security in general or backup in general or cyber protection, how you, um, the concepts that you need to know and the words that you need to be familiar with, not just, well, here's the console, and here's what this feature or functionality does. Right. So on the backup thing, you know, the the old school, like, oh, here was an executable. I double clicked it. Okay, that was yep. one thing. But now with the backups, we have backups of infected files. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, so what do we do to protect <laughs> ourselves from that, right? So how do, how do we clean that upon, yeah. upon restore? Uh, and so it's, you know, it's a never ending challenge, but the well, that, in that case is real. Like, because if you don't, if you, if you, let's just say you do a back. So, so, um, you know, it, you could be infected with a hundred different things. As long as they haven't executed, it doesn't matter really. Right. right? So it's just, maybe it's taken up disk space, but that's in, insignificant. So you do a backup and you've got these hundred bombs ready to take, you know, these, these, um, time bombs of, a, of an exploit. Um, and when you, when you restore it, you're back. To where exactly, you were. just so, where you were. Right, which is one of the things that I think we do really well is when, when we make sure that when that backup is being created, um, any threats that are in there are, are taken out of it. Right, So that when you restore, you're restored back to, we'll call it a clean device or a clean version of your data. Right, as, as clean as it can be. As clean as it can be. As clean <laughs> as you know, right? Because there's, you know, as, as much as we believe that we build really good security products as you know other vendors as well, um, 
it, sometimes it's a cat and mouse where you're always one step ahead yeah. of the other. And sometimes there's some things and you want, so what you want to make sure of is if, if you don't catch it, you have some redundancy or some backup that's, oh, well, what's plan B and what's, what's plan C? So do you have a, a way that I can engage with the Cronus and say, I've had this incident and I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, can you help me? If you're an MSP, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So um, multiple levels of support, right, depending on um, um, what you what you have or what you've, what you've um, um, licensed with us. Uh, but absolutely, if you have, if there's any an issue, I mean, our support team available 24-7, answer any questions they have. And there's online knowledge bases, online academy, any, so you can search. I mean, if, you, if you're the type of person who would rather do it on your own, that's great. You can do that. But if you want to talk to someone, we're available there too. Because that, that simple example of the <clears throat> executable that, you know, now I have to restore from backup, um, it used to be that was all I had to do because when the client yeah. said, well, what happened? You'd say, look, I don't know. I could spend thousands of hours finding out or <laughs> we could just put you back in business. Yeah. But now we have to report to the government in some cases. Sometimes. We have to comply with state and local laws. We have to be able to say <laughs> – this is what happened, and yeah. this is what we did, and and we have to know not to just like let them jump back into their stuff, yeah, right, right? right? I mean, yeah. there is a process yeah. that didn't exist ten years ago. That's right. You're right, and it's. Um, it, I don't know that there's any that that's going to slow down at all, right? Because people do they do want to know if, if for no other reason they want to know so that they don't do it again, right? But they but they do want to understand. And they want to know like, that their data wasn't exfiltrated. Absolutely. Yeah. Did, did it, is it not only clean coming back, but did anybody, was anyone able to steal it? Or, you know, you, you hope not. Um, but they also want to understand just like, well, the first thing is usually people just want to be, they want to get back and running. That is the right. number one thing. They want to be back up. And so they run. Then the next question is what happened? <laughs> and so you want to have this audit trail. Um, I think the EDR capabilities help a lot on that because it will show, it, it, it'll answer that question of, well, here's what happened. This user had this either come in through an email or they visited a, a website or they clicked on a, whatever it might be. Um, and you can see the path of it. So then you can explain what happened and document it and say, you know, here's what happened and here's how we're going to prevent this in the future. And uh, the use of virtual machines must make that a billion times easier. Uh, for sure, yeah. Because I mean, not a lot of companies down. have the money to say, oh, let's go buy another server. We'll put the backup on that and see what happened. <laughs> right, right, exactly. No, the, with virtual machines, I mean, it's um, it makes things – so it makes things a lot easier in some sense. And then in some sense, um, it makes it more complicated uh, um, to have that tracking – uh, and to make sure that you're providing the security, right? So, so in, in a lot of because a, a machine comes up and it goes down and it's kind of gone, right? Like what you know, there may be some auditing, maybe some auditing in it, but right. um, it creates both. It's, it makes it better and worse, sort of at the same time. All right, so we're almost out of time. Yeah. So, but I do want to mention wow. Acronis.com, <laughs> and. Uh, that we are broadcasting live from the CyberFit Summit. So thank you for having yeah. us. I really appreciate that. Yeah. And uh, I guess the, the last question is, if I'm a partner, is what's the first thing I should buy from Acronis? <laughs> you can't say everything. You can't say everything. Um, so, uh, okay, so if I can't say everything, even though we just kind of did, what I would say, I mean, it, it all depends on the partner's customer. So what is, your, what is, what is driving the issues in your customer's um, environment? Is there something around where they're having issues with backup is it is it a security issue um is it a is it an automation issue that you're you're having to just do a bunch of things manually that you could automate to make that experience for your end customer better so it would to me it's what is it that and so i'm speaking as an msp think about what it is it that your customers um need or want the most and then back into it from there and say okay great so i see that i need to start with backup or i need to start with security or one of the other options very good. Michael Callahan from Acronis, thank you for being with us today. This has been yet another SMB Community Podcast. Now, I want to do like a, a little <laughs> okay. like a five-minute podcast okay. that, that, that we can slot into something in January because we're doing a different okay. kind of podcast in January. So, Okay. Good. About what? So about the same old stuff, unless there's something else you want to say. No, that's great. Okay. So, all right. So same questions, just a little bit smaller. Yeah, just yeah. Okay. just a just a little five sure. minute thing. So just yeah. to confuse your technicians back there. Right? So are they listening to it? Probably. Like, does anybody know? No, where no, they're they're like they're drink they have drinking <laughs> games and shit. They're smoking so. back there. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, all right. So let me let me do the. Let's, uh, I'll just go at two thirty.
Hi, this is Carl, and I'm joined now by Michael Callahan from Acronis, and you are the chief marketing officer. And do you think that's a job that's going to stick around for a while? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> uh, you know, I think so. And, and the, the reason that, that I say that, I mean, we're kind of joking about it, but I think um, it's becoming more and more important for companies to understand um, uh, their market. And I, I mean, to me, the core of being a chief marketing officer is not – it's not really the marketing programs. Um, you can learn that. You can. That's just an execution issue to some degree. It's the it's the word that that is derived from, which is market. Which is what is the market and what do they need and what what problems do they have that you can solve. So um, I do hope that the job <laughs> and the role stays around for a while, and I think it will. <laughs> so so we had we recorded a podcast back in November, and one of the things you said then is that you start by looking at your ideal client and then try to figure out okay who. Who is this person? What do they look like? And then you try to design stuff around that. I'm a huge believer you can't have good customer service until you know who your client is. For sure. So what have you done with regards to serving MSPs? What have you done that's based on that ideal client? Like how have you changed what you deliver or how you deliver it? Yeah, I, so I think this this may – I mean it's it's never a, like there, a beginning and end to it, but I think this started a couple years ago where we were talking to MSPs and said – what are your big problems, right? So I'm, I'm a big proponent, I'll take a little bit of a side road here, is a, a big proponent of doing what I call problem marketing. So instead of just being, being descriptive of what you do and, and expecting your customers to figure it out, talk to a problem. And usually you can get 80% of the problems that they have um, with a handful of problems, right? There, there's always a bunch of ones that kind of tail off after that, but you can get you can get most of them just in a handful of problems. So you talk to them and say, what are the problems that you have? And, and, and you can combine that to some degree with what are your customers' problems because we're talking about MSPs. But the MSPs came back and said, um, it's hard for me to train on all of these different systems, as an example. Um, it's, it's hard for me to manage all of these invoices I get from different vendors. It's, it's hard for me to make sure that all of the security solutions I'm using are up to date and they don't have any vulnerabilities that are outstanding. And all of that led to this, this idea of, we really should build something that's that's a um, consolidated agent that has this functionality that you're able to, as an MSP, turn on the pieces that you want or you don't want based on your business. And, and you may have a small piece of our platform or you may have a larger piece. But listening to them and understanding their problems led us to developing this uh, CyberTech platform that we have. Very cool. Well, thank you for being with us. I appreciate your time. And uh, I've been chatting with Michael Callahan from Acronis, and you can be found at acronis.com. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to the SMB Community Podcast. If you found this useful, interesting, or fun, please subscribe, share with your friends, and give us a thumbs up on your favorite social media. Please check out the show notes at smbcommunitypodcast.com and give us your feedback.